Question 6. Figure 6.1 shows the circuit diagram for a flashlight. There are three batteries here, positive terminal and negative terminal. This is a fixed resistor and here is an LED. An LED is a light-dependent resistor. The electromotive force EMF of the battery is 4.5 voltage. The circuit contains 60 watt fixed resistor. The current in the light emitting diode is 0.02 amperes. Question E. Calculate the potential difference across the LED. So we need to find out what is the potential difference here. The formula for potential difference is V equals to current times resistance. So the current is 0.02 amperes and the resistance is 60. If you do this, your answer is wrong because 60 is the resistance for the fixed resistor and we are looking for the LED. We do not know what is the resistance for LED and we cannot use the same resistance. In a series circuit, the total resistance of the circuit is the resistance of all the components in the circuit combined. Same as the voltage. The voltage of the circuit is the voltage of all the components combined together. However, the current in the circuit is equal everywhere. So now we know that the current here is 0.02 amperes, meaning that I can find the voltage of the resistor first. So the voltage of the fixed resistor is 1.2 voltage. And for series circuit, the total voltage in the circuit is equal to the voltage of all the components combined together. So the total voltage is 4.5 and we are looking to find the voltage of LED and we already know the voltage of the fixed resistor is 1.2. So that's going to give us 3.3 voltage. Next, question B. Explain why the LED does not light up if the battery is reversed. If the battery is reversed, the current will flow in this direction. LED is a diode which only allows current in one direction. If the diode is placed like this, the current has to flow in this direction. So if the current is now flowing in this direction, which is the opposite, it will stop the current from flowing. Therefore, the circuit now will be incomplete. So the reason the LED will not light up is because LED is a diode that allows current to flow in only one direction. And right now, it is reverse bias. Question C. The chemical energy stored in the battery is 1050 joules show that the flashlight operates approximately three hours. Now energy, there are a few formulas related to energy. Kinetic energy, potential energy, and energy in general. So of course we're not going to use the first two and this will be the formula that we are going to apply. Energy equals to power times time. However, we are not given with power here. But in order to calculate power, we can use the formula V times I. So the question needs you to show that the time here would give us 3 hours. So let's use this formula to find that out. Energy is 1050, our voltage is 4.5 and the current given is 0.02. And I'm just going to leave time here as an unknown because we need to prove that it's 3 hours. From this calculation here, we would get T equals to approximately 11,000. However, this answer here is in seconds. And the question gave us in hours. So now we have to convert these seconds into hours by dividing with 3600. And you would get 3.24 hours, which is approximately 3 hours. So there you go, you have shown that. Next, question D. Calculate the total charge that flows through the LED in 3600 seconds. The formula to calculate charge is Q equals to current times time. The current is 0.02 amperes and the time is already given. So the charge obtained here is 72 coulombs. Don't forget your units and your units for charge is coulomb. Question 7. Figure 7.1 shows some uses of electromagnetic radiation and different regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. This is a question from chapter 3. Question A. Draw a line from each use to the correct region of the spectrum. Each region of the spectrum is used once. One line has been completed for you. So it shows here that the Bluetooth headset is in the region of radio waves. As mentioned in the previous video, your course specification of the subject is extremely handy. We're going to use the notes provided in the specifications to answer this question. For the second option, you have thermal imaging and thermal imaging is under infrared. Next, you have got photography. Photography is under visible lights. 
And finally, for sterilizing medical equipment, this is under gamma rays. Just match them accordingly. Question B. State the speed of the electromagnetic wave in a vacuum. The speed of electromagnetic wave is similar to the speed of light, which is 3.0 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Question C. A Bluetooth headset can be used to listen to music on a mobile cell phone without the need for wires to connect the headset to the phone. Part 1. The headset uses frequencies in the range of 2.4 to 2.48 GHz. Calculate the wavelength of the radio waves when the frequency is in the middle of the frequency range. Okay, so you are asked to calculate the wavelength and you are given with the frequency. The formula related to frequency and wavelength is V equals to frequency times lambda. Lambda here is the wavelength. The speed that we are going to use here is based on the speed of electromagnetic waves. The frequency is already given, however it is given in range. So you've got two values, but they specifically mention that you have to take the middle. And the middle of 2.4 and 2.48 is 2.44. Another detail that you should pay attention to is this is given in gigahertz. When using this formula, the frequency should always be in hertz. So in physics, there are a few standard forms or terms that you should know. Tera is equals to times 10 to the power of 12. Giga is times 10 to the power of 9. Mega is times 10 to the power of 6. And Kilo is times 10 to the power of 3. Milli is times 10 to the power of negative 3. Micro is times 10 to the power of negative 6. Nano is times 10 to the power of negative 9. And Pico is times 10 to the power of negative 12. I doubt that they would use Pico and Terra in your syllabus, but I think it's still good for you to know all this. So for Giga, it's times 10 to the power of 9, meaning that our frequency is 2.44 times 10 to the power of 9. And after rearranging the formula, this is what you will get, and the value of lambda is 0.12, and the unit here is in meters. Again, if you don't know what values you should put, refer to what you use in your equation. In your equation of speed, you use meters per second, so the value of the wavelength will also be in meters the same. Next question, part 2. Suggest why a Bluetooth headset only works well over short distances. The reason it only works well over a short distance is because radio wave loses energy when they pass through walls. Question 8. The isotope uranium-235 is represented by below. This one. Question A. State what is the number 92 and 235 represent in this symbol. This number here represents the proton number and the number at the top is its nucleon number. This question is from Chapter 5, Nuclear Physics. Question B. Uranium-235 is a fuel used in nuclear reactors. Part 1. State the process by which energy is released from uranium-235 in a nuclear reactor. In this chapter, there are two processes that you will learn. The first one is nuclear fusion and the second one is nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is when you have two hydrogen atoms which is combined together to form a helium atom. Since this reaction needs a very high temperature, it can only happen at sun because this temperature can only be reached in the sun. Nuclear fusion is when an unstable isotope is bombarded by a neutron and it will split into two daughter nuclei and it will produce a lot of energy. If you have seen the movie Oppenheimer, you will learn and hear a lot about nuclear fusion, which is the process used to create a bomb. Anyway, the process by which the energy is released from uranium-235, which is an unstable isotope, is nuclear fusion. Part 2 a nuclide equation for this process is as below, over here. You can see this is the unstable isotope and it reacts with a neutron, meaning that a neutron is bombarded into an unstable isotope and it will split into more stable elements and produce more neutrons which then bombards into another unstable isotope and then it splits again and this happens continuously, this is a chain reaction. Describe the mass and energy changes that take place during this process in the nuclear reactor. So as I explained earlier, the unstable isotope will be bombarded by the neutron which the nucleus now will be converted into a more stable nuclei. And as you can see, they are smaller in mass. 
So the mass changes is that the nucleus converted to more stable nuclei with smaller mass. And the energy changes is that the mass difference from before and after will now be converted into energy. So that's what you can mention. Next question C part 1. Describe how thermal energy from nuclear reactions is used to generate electricity in a power station. This question is from chapter 1.7, Energy, Work and Power. Okay, so how does thermal energy used to generate electricity? Whenever we speak about generating electricity, the key points that you have to mention is the existence of turbine and generator. So how does thermal energy help with the movement of the turbine? So thermal energy can be used to boil water or make steam. Now this steam produced is at very high pressure and it will drive the turbine to rotate. This turbine is now connected to a generator which will convert this kinetic energy into electricity. So remember, anytime you are asked how a certain type of energy can be used to generate electricity, you always have to mention that you need to run a turbine that you can connect to a generator to convert the energy from the turbine into electricity. Next, part 2. State one advantage and one disadvantage of using nuclear fuels in a power station instead of using fossil fuels. So the advantage of nuclear fuels is that nuclear fuels can produce a large amount of energy and there will be no pollution or even greenhouse gases. And the disadvantage is that since this is a nuclear fuel, nuclear fuel will produce nuclear waste, meaning that there is a potential of a leak of radiation. Question 9. Table 9.1 gives information about three planets in the solar system, Earth, Jupiter, and Unknown. Question A. State the name of planet X. Okay, we can find this out by looking at the average distance from the Sun. So, X has a shorter distance compared to the Earth from the Sun. So, we know that from the Sun, it's Mercury, Venus, and then Earth. So, this planet here must be Venus. Next. Describe the relationship shown in table 9.1 between the mass of a planet and the gravitational field strength. At the lowest gravitational field strength, the mass was 4.8. As it increased to 9.8, the mass became 5.97 which increased as well. And when it increased more to 23.1, we can see that the mass became even higher, approximately 2000. So the relationship here that we can mention is that the larger the mass of the planet, the larger the gravitational field strength at the surface. Question C. Explain why distances from Sun in Table 9.1 is an average value. Over here, it mentions that it's average distance from Sun. The reason is because the orbits of the planet around the Sun is not circle, instead it is elliptical, meaning that the distance here could be different compared to the distance here. So which distance are you going to use? We cannot pick either one, but instead, what we should be doing is getting the average. We can take both the sides and divide it by 2 to get the average distance. So the reason here is because the orbit of planets is elliptical and not circular. Next, question D. Show that the average orbital speed of the Earth is approximately 30 kilometers per second. The formula for orbital speed is 2 pi r over t. So we need to show that the orbital speed is 30 kilometers per second. According to the table, the radius of Earth is 149.6 and the value of t is 365.2 days. As you can see here, the answer that we want to prove is 30 kilometers per second, meaning that the time which is 365 days has to be converted into seconds. So let's do that. 2 times pi, the radius is 149.6 times 10 to the power of 6 kilometers over 365 days times with 24 hours times with 60 minutes and 60 seconds. Putting all this value in your calculator, you will get 29.81. So 29.81 is approximately 30. So there you go. You have shown that the speed of the Earth is indeed 30 kilometers per second. The final question 10. Complete the sentences about the life cycles of stars. So I've made a video on the life cycles of stars. Please watch that if you would like to learn more in detail of this chapter.
So this here is a protostar. Protostar are formed from clouds of dust and gas. Question B. A protostar becomes a stable star when... So this is a stable star. And how does a protostar becomes a stable star? This happens when the inward force of gravitational attraction is balanced by the outward force due to high temperatures. When these both are balanced, it becomes a stable star, which is the sun in our solar system. Question C. The initial fuel used to power nuclear reactions in stars is hydrogen. Again, I've mentioned all of this in the video, so you can watch that to understand further. And question D. Stars that are approximately the same size as the sun become red giant stars, which then form a... So from red giant star, it will form a planetary nebula with a white dwarf star as its center. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope it was worth your time. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. Bye!